Welcome back to another part of our F1 Manager 24 Create a Team Career Mode. This one for the Austrian Grand Prix to kick us off. Then we go to our home race at Silverstone Spa. And then I'm tempted to even get to the summer break for Budapest for the Hungarian Grand Prix. But we'll see how things go. But right now, we're coming off a massive high in the last episode. A wacky, wet and wild race once again at Monaco. Or race weekend, rather, as rain and a race red flag and a safety car really mix things up and we're sitting very pretty right now on 35 points versus rb with 16 sauber on five but i'm feeling good now after that monaco result genuinely i feel very good about just pouring stuff in to the research for next year's car because if we look at the r d chart this is an updated one now going into the next race weekend you can see you know we, we plateaued we haven't made an upgrade now in basically two episodes and we've kept pace because other teams around us actually haven't made too many upgrades in fact some of them have got worse in a way uh sauber definitely also relative to Haas now actually lower than them so sauber even though they have actually still been looking pretty good to be fair which is a testament to hulkenberg and ricardo's drivers sauber technically have actually got worse as a car in recent races and yet they've still looked pretty good so their driver's doing well but their actual car has actually got worse they're the worst car on the grid once again as they were in season one for us we're staying in the mixer with williams alpine rb just a little bit ahead of us but you know we're all kind of close together so i think as long as we are not losing major points to rb let's say and sauber or, or anyone else you know beneath us at the table i think i feel comfortable putting more resources into next year's car because obviously this is you know we're not just thinking about this season this is a long-term project it's a road to glory and right now we've got to play it by objective season two our objective what was it score some points and beat rb right now we're doing that right now we've scored actually way more points than i could have ever have imagined uh thanks to some to be fair some really crazy races obviously that have definitely helped us i think we would have scored less points in monaco if it wasn't for the red flag if it wasn't for the safety car maybe and the same for imola maybe but uh at the same time the car's also you know been on pace it's been up there it's been pretty good we play to our strength of managing the races that the car is better at and i think we've been doing a really good job but i think in this episode putting more uh, work into next year's car and kind of, kind of seeing if there's a possibility of spending some money on another hq upgrade i feel like we you know i feel like this would be a good point have a bit of momentum let's upgrade something on the hq i think right now we've got rear wing and suspension being researched right now now, uh, so we can't do it. I, I can actually put anything in for, for, for a moment, but the suspension research will get done pretty soon. So once that is done, we can actually then put in some more uh, work. But Austria is in three days' time, so actually we may not get the luxury. We may be going straight into the Austrian Grand Prix in this episode and then seeing what other management bits we can do in between. In terms of the car, we're all good in terms of car parts. The engine for Behrman, this one is, uh, well, it's got a minor fault. This one's also got a manifold so already on these two engines i i hope would be okay to the end of the season once again there may be a necessity to take a penalty at the end of the season but we'll see how it goes but that might be a little bit of a worry but the rest of the parts are all fine for both cars it's fine we've got a high risk there but we've got plenty of spare chassis parts so if we take a look at the well this is the suggested car performance relative to the rank on the grid uh 15th around austria 11th around Silverstone, 11th around Spa, and 11th around Hungary. So actually, Austria may be the weakest of all the circuits coming up, to be fair, um, for us. So actually, maybe this is one we definitely simulate and then get our teeth sunk into our home Grand Prix, which actually would be probably nice to, to manage, obviously, being the home race, wanting to score some points at home. And then we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I, I do kind of, I, I'm kind of itching to get even further into the season. So I might even do two further races but right now uh we just go into austria and we'll see how that race goes hey 17th and 18th on the grid wow that is a real crash back down to uh, uh well maybe maybe not reality but uh definitely on the back foot in a wet austrian grand prix race definitely maybe not worthwhile us managing this one it might be a painful simulation let's see though i'm curious about who's going to win the race because obviously there is a bit of a title chase going on from ferrari always, versus mclaren the end of that it's a 15th 
50. They always tease with that commentary. And it's Lando Norris that wins it for McLaren. McLaren really pushing back at that Ferrari, uh, you know, a couple of wins. They won three in a row, Ferrari. So this is, you know, a real strong, um, you know, a clap back from McLaren. Piastri winning in the last race, I think it was. Lando here today. Gasly, though, let's just talk about that. Gasly on the podium for Aston Martin. Crazy stuff there. Oh, my God. Hulkenberg got sixth place. What happened in this race? The, only the top three are on the lead lap. Everyone got lapped after P5. Antonelli P5 in the Mercedes. Verstappen down in P8. Hulkenberg. I just showed you the R&D chart and talked about technically, technically Sauber are the worst team on this grid. And Hulkenberg, honestly, he's a superhero for Sauber. Soon to be Audi in the next season. Um... Scoring eight points for Sauber, Ocon uh, six points for RB. That's unfortunate. And Haas get off the mark. Haas and Williams. Haas score two points. Magnussen scores one. And it's an awful race for us. Behrman three laps down. Giovinazzi two laps down. What happened in this race? I'm at, I'm so glad we didn't manage this. This would have been depression managing this because what well, it seems like we had no hope so oh my days all of a sudden we've got a few teams off the mark rb obviously we're still ahead of them but now the gap is a little bit smaller uh obviously but it's still fine it's still fine but maybe this episode we don't do a single upgrade but then probably by the time we get to next episode four races down the line we will have to do an upgrade for this year's car because they are definitely trying their best to chase after us but look at this aston martin are level on points with red bull the downfall of Red Bull in this series needs to be studied. Not only did they lose Verstappen, their reigning champion, them as constructors reigning champions, floundering in P5. They're not even broken 100 points. And McLaren are on 400, Ferrari on 300. That is insane. That is the night and day difference there. But um, Lando with that win, uh, getting back a bit of a lead. Piastri climbs back to second. So after a real onslaught from Ferrari, McLaren reminding everyone how strong they started the season by pushing back from that front. Gasly up to P6. So Aston Martin bubbling away quite nicely. Uh, and then Ocon going up the order with his point, point, points all. But the difference is for us... Both our drivers here scoring good points, whereas Ocon is the one carrying RB. Hulkenberg is, uh, well, pretty much carrying Sauber. Ricardo with one point there. So, yeah, we're, 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 we, uh, we can be lucky that Ocon is the only man scoring points for RB and Hulkenberg for Sauber. Otherwise, this may be a bit more of a trickier situation, but definitely have to keep an eye on that. And into next race, the British Grand Prix. It's a good thing we're managing that because we need to respond to what was an awful Grand Prix weekend. We only got one sponsor objective there on the driver performance, so not too much money coming in there. And um, I don't know what, what even happened. It was a washout Grand Prix, so maybe they just all were floundering in the wet conditions, probably, uh, as we've got uh, regulation votes for sporting changes. So... This is for gearbox limit up to five, ERS limit up to three. The engine limit stays the same. I'm all for this. Honestly, I'm all for this because it is so tricky to manage this stuff. The ERS only having two of those is mad. Like they just do not last the whole season. So I'm all for voting for this. Um, I, I, I'm already going to guess the other teams will vote against it. The bastards. So uh, I'm not expecting anything, but I'll, I'll vote for the change. And we've got an email back from our design center fire. Uh, the investigation is complete so we can go back to researching our car. Uh, and the design projects are now all open once again. So good to resolve that at least. What happened though in this race? What did you, what did you break? Oh, okay. There was a, oh, there was a total failure of a gearbox for Giovinazzi. That makes a bit more sense. And uh, we have some big wear on these parts for Behrman. Going to ma manufacture some new spares because we've got, uh, well, we've got high risk on quite a few things. So we need to make sure we have spares for everything. Side pods. I think we have two spares. Probably worth making one more. But let me just check any other high risk. Uh, side pod chassis. Okay, no, actually, I think we can go ahead and make a, another side pod just in case. 
Um, so, you know, this season, wanting to make sure that we're keeping tabs on everything, on every car part, doing the inventory, uh, so to speak, to make sure we've got everything ready for both drivers to have the best car possible, basically. One research part done, suspension, so we can actually add something else. Did we use all the ATR period last time out? I uh, don't know if we did or not what haven't we done we haven't done the chassis or a side pod let's go in for a side pod oh no we've got some atr period left okay great brilliant so 55 days left um so we're going to use all of it again just because so a whole atr period is now gone into research but uh, i i'm i feel good about doing a side pod yeah I, I think if we do one research at least of every single part that will be good and then we've got a couple that have you know had a few more right confirm that one million lovely right now, that basically confirms that we've used all our ATR period up, so we're not going to be spending too much money on research parts, maybe just manufacturing spares. So should we look into maybe upgrading something in our facilities, or maybe we wait for the next lot of sponsor payments? When will that come? Uh, pretty soon, um, after, after Spa would come in, so maybe it might be worth waiting for that. But let's have a little look at what we could maybe upgrade. Car part test center up to level 2. Because we've got level 2 on a lot of other things. So maybe level 2 on the car part uh, tester. So that's not as bad as I thought. 6.7 million. I'll do that right now. I don't I don't mind. I think I think we're I think we're calm financially to do that. 6.7 million upgrade. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Here we are. 6.7 million spent on the car part test center upgrade. 7.3 million. That seems a bit lower. We're you know below the 10 million mark now for the first time in a, in a while since the start of the season. But remember, we've now used our ATR period. We probably will only be spending about 1 million in the next few races for, you know, spare parts. So, you know, unless something goes horribly wrong, um, you know, it's like, like an, an, a scenario event. I think we should be absolutely fine. And now we come into the British Grand Prix. We've got some rain on Friday, rain in qualifying maybe, and then just a cloudy situation in the race. So, uh, well, 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 qualifying may be another exciting one in this part. All right, setup's tweaked going into quali. It is going to be intermediate. We'll track water go down slightly, slightly at the end. Very, very subtle, but not enough to not send them out a bit earlier. I think, to be fair, yeah, the AI ult can do that. There's a whole gaggle of cars there. Let's send them out now and get into that pocket just behind all of them. Hopefully, they don't go too slow in the out lap. I think we should be all good. All good. Yep, they can start their laps with plenty of clean air. Love to see it. Come on. Come on. It was uh, it was a bittersweet home Grand Prix for us last time in Season 1, you know? I, I felt like we there was a chance to do something with that wet, that uh, dry to wet race. And then we just didn't have the car to make the most of it. Then obviously we got punted off, didn't we? Uh, by a car uh, for Behrman's sake. And then O'Ward was uh, doing the best he uh, could, I think, if I remember correctly. So I think this year, this season, hoping to do better in front of the home crowd. Obviously, they'll be cheering on the, the big British names of uh, Lando and Hamilton up front. But hopefully, Ollie can make a name for himself here driving the British Arava Archer racing car as well as uh, let's speed this up then and see how this first lap is going to be we've done uh, two consecutive laps right so neither drivers uh, improved on that second lap that's fine they'll come in and we'll get ready to go again at the end of the session Magnussen runs wide for the second time in this qualifying session so the Dane really not loving that Williams out on circuit gonna wait till the very end of the session because uh, of this slight slight bit of uh, uh, lack of rain as the damp conditions actually go to 0. Point. Apparently, it's dry. It can't be dry, though, can it? No, it's not going to be. But uh, I'll send them on into right at the end. Let me check for tyres, though. Let's see if anyone's bold enough to go on the dries right to the end. Probably not. Okay, going to send them out. Well, it doesn't really matter when I send them out. Just whenever, really. Just get, get round the lap, basically, and get that lap time in. Get it done as we're down to P13 and 9. And uh, Behrman starts a lap, Geo starts a lap. So they're both on a flyer right at the end of the session as uh, the track has been as dry as it ever has been the entire session right now in the drop zone. Oh, well, all these guys are actually... Well, we could probably abort, really. I think we can just abort. There's no point even finishing. I mean, I'll let them finish the lap, actually, just to see where they are. But all these guys have had dreadful qualifyings. The two Williams out, Bottas, Ricardo, one of the uh, stars of last episode at Monaco, down and out in last place. 
Uh, unfortunately for us, Ocon is through up in P9, but Schwartzman out, uh, is out. So that's at least something uh, for us. And uh, we go on both into Q2 in the home race, which is positive. Q2 weather-wise, what are we saying? It's really going to get dry at the end. Okay, so I'm going to change my run plan. There's no point doing two laps. Let's just do one, get a banker, and then wait for the dry period. Right, the boys will set their laps now. But really, I think all the action will be at the end of the last part of qualifying, really. These lap times won't matter if we're getting to dry conditions there. That looks like it's going to get to either dries or... The inters, the new inters you put on will be really great around there. So definitely just put one lap through them to keep the tire wet up because I want to okay, use the God. same set of inters just in case we need intermediates for Q3. We'll, we need, we'll want a fresh set because I believe you don't get another fresh set, do you? I think maybe yellow flags. Oh, Ward span it at turn 16. That's unfortunate. For our ex-driver in the Aston Martin. The rear end just goes round. And he's on the grass there. Right now, we're only P13 and 11. So, well, Gasly, well, Gasly and Ocon maybe in the, in, in the kind of, you know, sights. But all the usual suspects looking pretty quick, actually. For once, Lawson's on pace with Russell. Uh, Verstappen's looking very quick in the Mercedes car there. Splitting the two McLarens right now. So, really... It's uh, Ocon and Gasly would be looking to fight, but it's consistently Gasly's been quicker than us, you know, and Aston should be quicker than us all season. Obviously, O Ward, uh, just for the caliber of driver versus Gasly, it has that deficit difference, but Gasly should be looking comfier. So that's probably a pull out from him. So in reality, for once, because both McLarens, both Ferraris, both Red Bulls, both Mercs are on pace, really... The only safe person we could look to knock out is Ocon. So there may be disappointment for one of our drivers. Right now, Gio is the one closest to Q3. But um, as I said, the track water is going down. So let's see what this is going to be. It, it, will it be dry? I, I don't know. I don't think it'll be dry, you know. I think we'll just be another set of inters. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reconfigure this, just readying ourselves up for that last lap on inters. But... We'll be, we'll be ready to change over if we need dries. That track dampness is going down, but it's not going down quick enough. Even though right now in the sky, it is dry now, I think. Who's going out? Yeah, the Ferrari's out, and it's not raining. You can see it's actually very it's a little bit of sun coming out here, but it's uh, not dries yet. Will it be right at the end of the session, though? That's the thing. Will anyone risk it? The latest we can go out is like two minutes so i'll wait till then i'll wait till then all right i think i think we just go into yeah the track the track saying it's just still damp so let's go for inters let's wait a little bit and then send out them and send out geo now let's go let's go hopefully they i hope geo makes it oh no is geo gonna make it i really hope geo makes it bearman's gonna be fine geo's right there bearman will be fine he's off on his on his run and geo is gonna make it thankfully he starts his flying lap Maybe we could have risked it for the dry tyres. It looks very dry there, and right now it's going to change over from damp to dry. Maybe we could have risked it. Maybe. Maybe. In hindsight, maybe we should have, but oh well. We're here. Let's see what this can be right now. We're P11-13, which wouldn't be too bad, to be honest, in the grand scheme of things. P11-13, that would be a decent quality, actually, for us. You know, maybe, you know, let's not get used to getting into Q3 and doing some upsets just because of the last few episodes. But, um, oh, what the? Sonoda. Sonoda P5 in the Alpine. Ocon P4. Oh, we absolutely should be trying to aim for Q3 now. What? RB in the top four with Ocon. Sonoda's done bits in that Alpine to be P5. So absolutely, we should be looking to be better. Behrman, two green sectors going through the final corner. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Up into P5. Geo, surely, surely just keep it clean in the last few corners and we could be knocking out the championship leader. I mean, he already is knocked out. He already is knocked out, but it could be even worse for him. Giovinazzi through. Oh, Piastri's very lucky, you know. Piastri's very lucky. He scrapes through into the top 10. But that's massive. Both chasing Ferraris and Piastri are into Q3. But the championship leader, Lando Norris, knocked out in P13. Along with Lawson in the Red Bull P14. Verstappen got knocked out in the Mercedes. 
That's unbelievable. And Russell, he's looking pretty quick out there, but he's got he's gonna have a penalty, it seems. And O'Ward as well looking quick. He's actually knocked out his own teammate, has he? Where's uh where's Gasly? Yeah, Ga yeah, O'Ward knocked out did better than his teammate in the Aston Martin, but he's got a penalty as well. But uh, this is another topsy-turvy wet quali. Just like in Monaco, there could be some upsets here. And just like in Monaco, Ferrari could really capitalize here. Very much so against McLaren. Especially against the championship leader. And it's going to be dry now. It's going to be dry. Very, very interesting qualifying. Right, sending them out early because... Uh, well, it's, it's all dry right now, and there's actually maybe a tiny, tiny bit of rain on the way here. Very subtly, you can see. So let's get him out. We're only doing one, one lap of fuel just to, you know, have the okay. car as light as possible. And this one lap, that may be the one that counts. So come on, lads. Get the good lap in. We're going to have a lot of good, air, you know, clean air. So no excuses, lads. No excuses. Come on, come on, show us what you got. The home race, especially you, Behrman. Home Grand Prix for you. All right, here we go, through the final corner. Obviously, right now, we're the only ones setting the lap time, so let's not read into the colors or whatever, but it's uh, 127.1. Why do I feel like that just doesn't sound fast? Giovinazzi across the line. Ooh, they're quite closely matched, actually. That's, that's quite promising. The fact they're quite closely matched, well, that either means they're equally fast or equally slow. <laughs> Um, let's hope it's the first one. But um, who's uh, going to come around the bend? Oh, Ward. Oh, Ward goes quicker. Oh, only by a tiny margin. We've gone quicker than RB, though. <laughs> Suck it, mate. Suck it. Ahead of RB. Hamilton goes quicker, obviously. Copy. Hamilton on provisional pole. It's starting to rain, though. Oh, Ward. Very, very close. Antonelli. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Antonelli 0 0.065 off the man he's replaced at Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton. Russell's gone slower. The man who went quickest of all in Q2 only goes P3. Sonoda. Oh, Leclerc. Oh, what a lap from Charles Leclerc. Six tenths of a second quicker than his teammate. Piastri comes in. 0 0.019 off. Leclerc. Leclerc and Piastri have absolutely smashed it. The, the Leclerc brothers have smashed it here today. 1-2. They're miles ahead of Lewis. And that's miles ahead of most of us. And that's when the rain started to fall as well, which makes it even more impressive. So I'll take that, though. P7 and 8. Beaten, you know, we've beaten the teams that we should be beating. Alpine, and obviously we want to look to beat RB. The rest of them, you know, even O'Ward should be beating us. So to be honest, that is the maximum we could have hoped for today. So I'll take that. I'll take that. And surely now with the rain falling, that'll be it, I, I, I assume. Like track grip's going to go lower. I don't think anyone will be going quicker than that. People are going out. To be fair, the dry, it only says 0.26 dry. So maybe it's worthwhile going again. I mean, we have another set of softs to use. So why not? Hey, why not? Why not? Right, we'll go again. Oh, Russell's ran wide. Russell wide in the damp conditions in the Red Bull. And that's not going to help his case from going up further than P5. But um, you know what? The, the, the person I'm most impressed with is Antonelli. P4 in the Mercedes car. Obviously, Verstappen's knocked out. So he's flying the flag for Merck and he's ahead. He's ahead of Russell. He's ahead. Uh, and he's only he's only just a tiny bit off Hamilton. So the two drivers that were in the Mercedes car and uh, he's now in the new... He's the new generation of Mercedes driver. Doing very, very well. Yellow flags. Oh! Oh! Hamilton's on the grass! Hamilton spun it. He's broken his rear wing. Lewis has broken his rear wing. He's crashed. It's the same place as where Russell went wide, but he must have had a full tank slap of spin. Let's see. Oh, big, big spin. Big hit, big hit on the left rear. And the Ferrari has damage. That'll be a blow for Hamilton, but that's going to be good for Leclerc. That'll be good for Piastri as well. Let's see on the flying lap. Behrman, how is he looking? Yellow first sector. Yellow middle sector. Yeah, the rain's affecting it too much. The rain's affecting things too much. So they will finish, I think, P7 and 8. That's fine, though. That's fine. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with P7 and 8. I will take that happily. And Russell and O Ward, remember, have penalties. So we'll be starting P5 and 6. That's big. I mean, that also means Sonoda and Ocon will be starting P7 and 8. So topsy-turvy one. Again, in the topsy-turvy sort of quality, Ferrari are the ones who gain the most. Leclerc, P1. I mean, Piastri is there, let's be real. But 
in terms of versus the championship leader down here this i mean for piastri as well this is a big opportunity right two stop strategy it seems like i don't think a one stop's really well there is a one stop there but i don't think it would be possible like maybe with giovanazzi maybe but i feel like the two stop is the vibe um you know historically on this game yeah it's been very high tire wear so let's just go for a two soft for both drivers although to be fair i don't fancy using the softs i think they'll just wear out quite quickly at least at the start of the race maybe save it for the end of the race like swap it around so go medium medium then soft yeah gonna start both drivers on mediums go medium medium soft giovanazzi i'm gonna extend the first stint to push harder in the middle stint and then go earlier on the softs than Behrman because we know he's just not going to be able to take the softs as long as Geo. Obviously, things could change in the race, but I think that's the, that's the game plan. Again, dropping down one lap of fuel and pushing them very hard at the start to see if they can gain some posi positions and then try and hold position. But it is a track you can overtake at, so it's going to be tough out there, but let's see. Anticipation is high and the drivers are ready for this. The British Grand Prix. And it's lights out. Lights out and away we go. Let's see how we do from P5 and 6. Giovinazzi looks to have gone a little bit of a better of a start. As he's on the inside there. The Italian through into P5. Please keep it clean, lads. Please keep it clean. Please don't fight each other too much as Piastri takes the lead of the Grand Prix. But Leclerc comes right back at him. The Ferrari into P1 again from uh, Oscar, Hamilton, Antonelli still there. And Behrman just taking P5 from Gio again. Sonoda Ocon, Verstappen up to P9, Gasly P10. Lando Norris makes a move though to get into P10 himself as him and Verstappen look to recover and climb up this order. And the same for Russell and Ward as well after doing so well in quali. But right now our driver's line of stern here. And already I may be sensing a, a holding pattern of us not being able to keep up maybe with the... Well, we definitely won't be able to keep up with the top three. Maybe Antonelli might be a bit susceptible just because of his rating. Uh, but he does technically... He should technically have a car to pull away from us. Let's see. Going to calm it down on fuel already and also the ERS because... Uh, well, it's already down to two kilograms of fuel. And also the tyres as well. Let's not overstress them too much straight away. But Behrman sticking with uh, Antonelli. That's good at least. Gio there behind watching on as they get very close. Oh my God. What? Ocon is absolutely done this. Antonio, you can't be letting that happen. You can't be letting that happen. Ocon. He's, he's Ocon. He's flying in the RB. What? Excuse me? Ocon has absolutely minced us. What the hell? I know he's on softs, so there's a reason why he's a bit quicker, but this was ridiculous. Honestly, it, it's like he's aware of the, the of the rivalry and the disgust I have for this team. Right, maybe a bit more pushing needed then. Oh my god, oh god, there's a lot of cars there. I have the feet I have a bad feeling our race base isn't that great around here maybe compared to how high we qualified because Sonoda's now past this them and down to P8 Geo leading the way again in P6 from the two drivers um oh god and now Gasly's there Verstappen's there oh that's gonna be a very tasty fight Verstappen the Gasly Lando's in the mixer as well this is gonna be very very exciting it's all happening behind Oli Behrman. To be fair, a lot of them are, you know, all of them behind us are on softs. Sonoda's on softs as well, and he's overtaken Giovinazzi, so maybe to be expected, we need to bide our time. Right now, we're susceptible, but soon we'll be on the better race tyre, so we just need to hang in there as best we can as uh, Giovinazzi comes back at Sonoda. Oh, my, no. Don't you dare let that Frenchman overtake you, okay? Don't you dare. Antonelli. Antonelli. I swear you will not be able to show your face in Italy ever again if you let this RB overtake you. What? How? 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 How is this man performing so well? Ocon has become a driving god in the RB. And, uh, I mean, look at that gap that has formed there. What's the interval? Interval six seconds. And now we're behind Gasly and Sonoda. Oh, God. And now Lando and um, and Verstappen are right behind us. Why does why do I suddenly feel like this is like season one vibes again? 
What's going on? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. I mean, there are much quicker cars, but still. Oh, no. Just hold through. Hold through. We're being overtaken. Behrman's down to P10. Geo is still holding on somehow, I think. Yeah. Or no, no. Now he's been overtaken by Lando Norris. As the fast lap goes to Piastri. Ocon. Oh, Ocon's got a problem. Ocon's got a problem. I like to see that. Let's go. And uh, the tyre wear. Oh, yeah. The tyre wear is coming down. Okay. Slowly but surely, we should be in a better position in this race. Soon. Soon. I know we're losing all the positions right now. But we will be in a better position soon. Right. We've got some pit stops being made by a few. Lawson's in. Um, and this will be the start of their, their, the guys on softs basically pitting. Right now, though, sit rep is. Behrman's actually overtaken Giovinazzi then uh, in this race. I've just had them on, on, on neutral, by the way. So uh, on their own accord, Behrman's overtaken Giovinazzi. Giovinazzi, though, has 4% more tyre wear. So I think he will be coming back at Behrman very soon. But these guys obviously expected to be, uh, you know, they're going to always overtake us. Curious about Ocon, what his pace is going to be like. 38% on softs. Surely you should be wearing away. Like this gap should be coming down very rapidly. I would, I would like to think soon. All right, the leaders are pitting. The leaders are pit, and Ocon's pit, and we're through into P six and seven. The pit window is technically open for Bearman right now, but it's not the optimal pit stop uh, window as it stands. We will keep going like this giving each other DRS, as you can now see Giovinazzi is ahead of Behrman. I think it's useful for them to be close together because they're basically giving each other a DRS and hopefully not defending too much. What tyres have everyone else got on? Yeah, mediums, I think. Ocon's got another set of softs. He's got, he's going soft, soft. Soft, soft, medium. Do RB really have that good tyre wear? That's ridiculous. That's mad. Oh, Piastri's got a mechanical fault. Oh, it's a one-two for Ferrari, to be fair. Hamilton, oh, he's not pit yet. Lewis is not pit, but Leclerc's pit. And Leclerc's jumped Piastri in the pit stops as uh, Behrman pushes on and will come in now. And Giovinazzi will now push on on this next lap and come in on the next one, I think. Or we'll, go, we'll come and carry on a bit. And no, we can carry on a little bit. We can carry on a little bit. Right, Behrman's in, comes out. He's going to be how many... What are we saying? Uh, he is... Well, we want to be aiming for Ocon. So he's about, what, uh, 13 seconds behind him? Okay, okay, okay. He, oh, his confidence is very low. Oh, that's not a great sign, is it? Right, pitting G on this lap. We're going full out attack with him. Uh, I feel like maybe this race strategy is uh, unraveling, though, a little bit for us. I don't know if we're that quick. Well, not unraveling. The strategy is not unraveling. We're just actually just not that quick on race based terms. Right, pushing Giovinazzi a bit harder now, as uh, I, like I said, this uh, me this medium stint is a lot shorter, you can see, for him than last time, because uh, I wanted to, on purpose, push him hard, and Ocon is falling down the order, so the RB is coming back to us. He's coming back to us. The rest of them, they were never in our realm of fighting. The Ferraris, McLarens, this Aston, the, the Mercedes. The Red Bull. But this man, this one man, is who we're after. Okay? That is it. He might be going down to P10. We could be fighting with both our drivers for one position today. Sit rep on the lead as Leclerc leads the way with a nice healthy gap to Piastri right now, who's got mechanical issues. Lando's recovering well from that Q2 exit. He's up to P4. Lewis P3, so Ferrari will be outscoring the championship leader, but not by too much. Gasly doing an amazing job in the Aston, recovering from his Q2 knockout. Verstappen head of Antonelli, who does have a big problem on his car, and the same for Ocon. So the Red Bulls should eventually catch them, and we will be there as well in the background, you can see. I think Gio can actually have a go at these Red Bulls. I'm not even kidding. I think he can genuinely overtake one of these Red Bull cars. Go on, Gio. Go on. Go on. You know you want to. You know you want to go for the move there. Go on. Go for it, son. Go for it. On the inside. Oh! Ooh, I thought it was going to be a double overtake there for a sec. Oh, go on. Yes! The move on Lawson. We've overtaken a Red Bull. Fair and square. And Behrman gets Lawson as well. Good stuff. We've dispatched of the slow Red Bull with both drivers. The pace is coming back to us. The strategy is coming back to us. With DRS, surely this is a slam dunk. Surely a slam dunk. Tire wear is still fine. We're on track with Giovinazzi. And he makes the move on the inside of the Red Bull car. Come on. Get the elbow out there. Come on, man. 
Finish it off. Yes, he's got it. 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 Into, into the fill section. Come on. Lovely stuff. Right, Ocon's in the pits. And he comes out on, I assume, hot. Not medium. So he really is doing soft, soft, medium. Oh, yellow flags. Who's that for? None of our drivers. It's all fine. It's all good. Nothing's going to come from that. Perez running wide. What's new? Um, I think, okay, right now we're pushing Geo. We're pushing Behrman as well right now, to be fair. Because Behrman now is overtaking Russell. Both Red Bulls have been overtaken. Come on. On, on merit, we've overtaken both Red Bulls. That's outstanding. Russell's got a fault. Okay, so his car's actually genuinely slow. That might, maybe that fault was coming. So maybe that was the reason why he was a bit slow. And to be fair, a lot of drivers have got mechanical faults right now. So we're in a good position, to be fair. As uh, Lawson pits. Ocon's not too far off us. Ocon's there. That's where Behrman is. So we do have still a lot of work to do to close up on Ocon today. All right, keep going with Geo. Let's see what the lap times are like. 132.5. It's going to be a one third. Oh, okay. A lot slower, a lot slower. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Behrman's going to be in as well. It's a double stack. It's a double stack. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, risky. Oh, we're going to pull it off. We're going to pull off a double stack. Good, good stuff, boys. Good stuff. Oh, okay. That's all right. It's all right. It's not a quick pit stop, but no issues. No issues. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Good, good stuff, boys. We are quite, st we're 15 seconds off Ocon. So... If, if this is going to happen, if we're going to get Ocon, it's going to be right at the end of the race. Right at the end of the race. It's the last lap. We have it's not, available. we've really not made any ends meet on, uh, on Ocon, unfortunately. The gap is seven seconds. Damn it. This RB, man. This RB, this team really, really annoying me. This enemy we've created in this series after they poached, come, come for our team, poaching us. Geo. I really thought we'd come back enough in this race, but just uh, not enough pure pace. Meanwhile, Leclerc on the final lap on the way for a win. And Hamilton did get overtaken in the end. So it's Lando's recovered very well to P3. Verstappen did get Gasly in the end in the Merck. Behrman, not anywhere near Antonelli, but he's miles away from Russell's. He'll book in at least one championship point there for P10. P8 for Geo will still be all right. P8, P10, we'll take it, we'll take it. But Ocon scoring P7 is big for them. Big for them, which just shows, reminds you, as much as we've been scoring a lot of points, the team we're trying to beat, they're scoring a lot of points as well, you know? They are, they, they, if anything, RB are pushing us and motivating us to keep doing better. It's a good win for Leclerc, though. Good win for Leclerc and Ferrari. Amazing recovery, to be honest, to be fair, for the uh, championship leader, Lando Norris, in third place. Um, you know, big, big for him because he was way out of the point. So for him to recover like that is mad, is big. Uh, and it means he still has a very healthy lead in the championship versus Piastri. You know, his teammates, the one in second, not Ferrari, which is good for him. Constructors-wise then, what's the damage? Well, overall, we scored five points. RB scored six so, you know, Behrman did contribute. That one point does contribute a decent amount to softening the blow. So, you know, it's uh, it's only one point gained on us, um, which is which is positive, I think. Now, it could have been a lot worse, you know, if we you know didn't make those moves right at the end to get those overtakes on... Uh, uh, on what was it? The... Um, on Antonelli for, for Giovinazzi's case and for Behrman to get the Red Bull. So, yeah, it, it's all right. It was all right. I think a race like that puts into perspective, like... Um, um, the Monaco race was, uh, you know, uh, an amazing result. It's definitely not where the car is. Like, <laughs> a lot of things came together. Kind of today, that's, me that's really where the car is. Like, we weren't quicker than RB, and nothing came our way to get us ahead of RB. So, yeah, we still have work to do. But right now, whilst we have that points advantage, I, I still think it's wise to put stuff into uh, next year's car. As Guru grows. Abby pulling also grew, but Guru grows to 84 underneath us as a head of Aero. That's a positive as well. And we've got the vote, and they have voted against it. Of course they have. Of course they have. Of course they have. I knew they would. So no change on the sporting regulations when it comes to the power unit allocations. Oh, oh! Construction delayed. Are you kidding me? Construction delayed to our car park test center. Delay completion by 14 days. Or we... Oh, my Lord. If... Really? If I spend 700... 720k 
then we can get it done still. Otherwise, it's delayed by, what's that, like a whole week, pretty much? I'll just acknowledge the delay. One week, yeah, fine, of course. Of course, of course. But we've got a board performance review coming up as Alex Chan grows to 81. So, so far, we're on target for our ninth place in the Constructors' Championship. The long-term objective, scoring points in 50% of the races this season. The current progress, we've scored 6 out of 12. So... We're actually on, on, on target then at the moment. Is that all? No, we're trying to... Oh, we need to score a total of 12 out of 24, sorry. But we're, we're basically halfway at, at the mid-season board review. We're halfway to that goal at the halfway point in the season. So we're actually on target to be doing this three seasons ahead of target, such as our ambitions as a manager to, to take this team right to the very top of course so uh, of course we're we're ahead of target you know that, that's the way we work around here and uh, because of that we've got a high board confidence 1.5 million this is this feels good this is in stark contrast to the uh very wishy-washy confidence we had this time last season so i'll i'll take a lot of solace into that and oscar piastri wins the belgium grand prix then it's a 1-3 for mclaren hamilton p2 Something must have happened to Leclerc. Surely something happened to Leclerc as uh, Oli Behrman gets his two points at Spa. That's a good race for him. It's decent. Two point. Oh, no, though. Ocon got P7 again. This guy, he, uh, Ocon's legit become a driving god in RB. Like, he's doing bits for them. So consistent. Leclerc down to P6. And great race for Antonelli. P4 in the Mercedes. Verstappen only P10. What happened there for him? And then Giovinazzi, he, 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 what? He must have had a crash. Giovinazzi, P20. He lost 11 positions. He, that means he started inside the top 10. That's crazy. So, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a mellow one for us, I guess, with Behrman just scoring two. Ocon scored six. So, RB close up by four points. The pressure is still there. The pressure is very much still there. But, um, and the pressure is there for the championship leader, but not from a different team, from within the team. Are we going to be getting a Piastri v Norris title fight here in McLaren? This could get very tasty. And Behrman grows to 84 rated. Very, very good stuff. And are we going to get, what kind of money are we going to get for the sponsor plan? For, okay, thank God. This time we did get our money. Okay, okay. That's that's great. I was worried we were going to get just a measly 1 million again. So I, I actually don't know how the sponsor plan works in season two. Because season one, we just kept getting 1.6 because that's exactly what we were meant to be getting. But this time, sometimes we've got zero or like nothing. Then we got like 1.6. Now we've got 4 million again. Uh, that's good then. That We could probably afford another upgrade maybe. To be, I'd be quite happy of buying another upgrade. But let's see. Giovinazzi. What? Okay, yeah, you clearly had a crash, mate. What happened here? Two crashes this season. That is Japan, and then now on the floor, rear wing off. Brilliant. Good thing we have spares. Good thing that this season we are very much doing a good work at inventory on all these things. Uh, that we can. Okay, apart from suspension, we've pretty much got spares of everything. Uh, what else do we need? Actually, let's take a full inventory before we talk about doing spare parts. I think we need two underfloors, to be honest, as well. So maybe we're going to spend the four million just on spare parts, to be honest. Just to make sure everything's fine. Rear wing, we absolutely need two spares of that. So it looks like we'll be spending most of this uh, sponsor money just on spare parts. But you know what, guys? I, I think, you know, if you guys have been watching since, like, previous years... I I hope you agree with me in the comments. I'm doing much better at, um, you know, keeping on top of spare parts in season two here. I'm being a responsible, a responsible manager this time around in season two. I am. Hey, you know what? We're not going to spend any more now. So we do still have a little bit of uh, money over 10 million. So let's go for an upgrade. And I think an operational upgrade is finally, finally due in the series because we are going to purchase... A helipad. We're going to purchase a helipad. That's going to boost the team marketability, boost the team attractiveness, get the big wigs, the big money big wigs into the factory to see the team. They can go on the guided tour in the tour center. They can see our beautiful facilities and uh, we'll, we'll just try and shoo them away from where the shed is located. We're just kind of on the on the map of the of the HQ. There'll be like a just a blank spot and people will wonder what's 
what's this blank spot on the map? And we'll, it'll be one of those like you know tightly kept secrets what's in there and it's going to be un it's going to be restricted access and no one can enter no one can know what goes on uh in that corner of the facility of uh arava archer gp yeah i think the heliban bring it on bring it on get that team attractiveness up even more higher and this time with this sponsor plan i don't know what happened with the last one then because this one we're going to definitely go over our target and this one is for 6.92 million engagement okay give me the money and now we've got some research parts that have been done rear wing is still being researched but now we can delve into more research even though we don't have any atr period allocation left i think we should still just put in some stuff into researching i think we'll do sh uh, chassis this time because that means then we'll have a research part done on every single thing and we are going to go into a fourth race here at the Hungara Ring just to cap off the season before the season break. And we are going to be managing this one as well as we're here in Q2 then. Behrman finishing off his first flying lap tire. We're very high around here at the Hungara Ring. So just the one flyer on each set of tires before we come in and assess where we are. Giovinazzi was looking a bit quicker in Q1. And he looks quicker again here than Behrman as uh, Gio just building on confidence um in this in this race weekend it, it, geo building on confidence here despite you know having that crash at spa so that's quite promising actually you would think bearman would be the one uh on on the kind of you know upper step after what he did in spa but will both drivers what kind of lap time is this i don't think it'll be comfy enough to get into q3 but let's see what it's going to be Ooh, my, oh, my geez. Magnussen setting a good time. That's a bit concerning. Definitely have to go again then, I think, with both drivers. Look at that tire wear, though. That was on that set of softs. Ridiculous. Well, let's wait to the end of the session. Right now, Behrman's in the drop zone. To be fair, both Red Bulls are as well. And Max Verstappen, of all people. Ocon again, annoyingly up there in the top 10, doing a fabulous job. But RB is, uh, let's send them out. Ooh, now. Let's send them out now. That's a good, a bit, a good bit of clean air, I think both drivers let's see what it's going to be green first sector green middle sector i'm hoping gets a bit overcast there's no rain involved though no just a bit overcast oh yellow middle though and geo's now in the drop zone this may be a difficult race for us it would seem we're on the back foot not too much pace around here it seem bearman to the line what can he do it's no improvement p14 geo does go quicker though blitzing lap for him he's in peak confidence and he's up to p7 Bearman, what happened, mate? What happened? He's out. He's out. And Geo's, Geo's in. What happened after Spa? You think Bearman would be on the... He, he's grown by an act... He keeps growing by attributes, like up to 84. And I'm still mystified how Geo outperforms him sometimes. As Geo scrapes on through. Very... A uh, bit of a mixed, uh, mixed bag in Q3 then. Sights through in the Williams. Ocon through. Both Astons are through. Verstappen got knocked out. Both Red Bulls got knocked out. Hang on a minute. Jeez. Okay, I might need to check the uh, R&D chart quickly at the uh, end, at the very end of the episode, just to update us on on everything. Because clearly, I think Williams have made some upgrades. I think Aston have made upgrades. Red Bull have maybe got slower, and then maybe McLaren Ferrari about the same uh, where they were relative to each other. But Piastri is really performing very well as he looks to try and chase after his teammate, of course, in the championship. Uh, heavy rain for Sunday, by the way, so that's why I'm managing this one because it could be a fun one. But let's go Q3 then, just with Giovinazzi. Okay, not a great lap. That was an absolute stinker of a lap for Giovinazzi. Seven tenths off. Ocon. Seven tenths. Nah. Can't be, can't be, can't be. We can't be having that, Geo. We can't be having that. Right, Geo, green first sector, green the middle. Come on, mate. Let's, uh, let's have a much better lap here. Science is even beating us in the Williams, for goodness sake. So this, this has to be better. And this might be the last lap because uh, we've gone out in pure clean air to get the best run. Not waited to the end. Crossing the line. So Giovinazzi improves. Ten. But not enough to even get him higher than P10. Clearly our car. I think this is the confirmation. We will find this episode to end out this one at this race. But I think next episode we're going to have to focus back on a tangible car upgrade for this season. Otherwise RB are definitely going to catch us at this rate. Big quality for Lewis. Gets up there in P2. 
to split the two McLarens. Piastri, though, on pole position. Look at that. Aston, five and six. Oh, Ward, P6. Ocon, seven. How is he doing it every time? And then Science is a really great one as well. P9 and the Williams. That's That should be a warning sign. If Science and the Williams is getting us, they haven't been a threat to us all season long, Williams. So we need to we need to worry a little bit maybe into next episode about upgrades. Saying that, we've beaten both Red Bulls with Giovinazzi, so they're in the mud even more than us. Oh my God, what on earth is this tyre strategy? What is this tyre strategy? Huh? What kind of weather pattern is this? Geo seems more, more like what we might do is just go straight to full wet, but definitely not starting on hard tires. Like, let's start on, uh, let's start on mediums at least. Or, or can we switch off? Yeah, there we go. Mediums. To be honest, I think there could be an interstint here, to be honest. I think there very much could be an interstint. Let's go Geo with this. And then with Be Bearman, we'll cover off that inter possibility, I think. This one, let's delete that. All right, let's see how that goes. Well, well we've pre-planned both scenarios, I guess. But in both scenarios, I think we're looking to go medium to wet. I hope that's the right call. I assume that's what the AI will do because Geo was on it. Which makes me think maybe could we gain something by going inters for a little bit. But if it's going to be two laps of inters, then four wets, you may as well just go on to four wets and kind of suck it up. Pretty damn tasty second race, eh? To manage in this one. Let's go. This is it. The Hungarian Grand Prix. And it's Lights down. Out. Away we go for the last race before... This summer break, it's a good start for Behrman. Giovinazzi, good one for him. Maybe on the inside of Carlos Sainz. Let's speed this up into turn one. Bit close, bit fine, but we'll get through. I think Russell may be on the hards. He is on the hards. There's quite a few people on the hard tyres. It's crucial to get to the wet period. So I'm going to go. Oh, God. What's this for Gio? Uh, oh, risk of high, uh, fault curbs. Okay, I mean, I was going to say, let's go high, avoid high-risk curbs because I think we need to absolutely protect these tyres. Absolutely protect the tyres. So we go through, and I think we'll just, honestly, in this first stint, even if we go backwards, we just need to protect these mediums. Right, oh, Behrman's overtaking the Stappen. Always good. Always good to overtake the reigning champ in the Mercedes now these days on the outside. Lovely, lovely little move there on Verstappen. Kind of takes me back to my fighting with uh, Verstappen in the F124 driver career as Behrman has an overtake fail on Sonoda. Could he get it done here with a bit of deploy? Let's see. Oh, yes. Go on, mate. Go on. Lovely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Meanwhile, Geo closing up to O'Ward. Science up to P8. And... <gasps> <coughs> Are you kidding me? Ocon P4. Ocon P4. Are you having a laugh? Oh, we're cooked. We're cooked. We're cooked. We need we need to have a we need to have a miracle miracle race in wet weather here. Ocon P4. Leclerc, what are you doing? Pull your pull your socks up and get going, mate. Right, just going to fast forward this yellow flags. For what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my. Who crashed? Who crashed? Russell over to Giovinazzi. None of our drivers involved in the crash. Multiple cars have crashed, though, at that corner. It involves, it involves our old driver, Pato Award, with the DRS open. Oh, big collision there. Big collision. Two, two lots of collisions. Just protecting the tyres. I don't even care about the intervals. I'm just protecting the tyres. And good news, Ocon is moving down the order. That is very good news for us as he's now been overtaken by Gasly as well. He's down to P6. That is a bit more like it. That is what we want to be seeing today, to be honest. As Behrman stabilised in P11 in this train with Sonoda and Verstappen. So good company there. And Gio staying ahead of Russell. All right, just keep going like this. Keep going like this. Doesn't matter if Gio gets overtaken. Behrman get, uh, doesn't overtake. So he's up to up to P10 then. He's actually closing up on Gio. Oh, please, guys, do not crash his teammates. I swear to God. Right, when's the rain coming? Rain's on the way. Lap 25, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, our, our pit stop's lap 23, but lap 25, I think. We're keeping the tyres in a very good check. I mean, look at that. 70% to uh, Lando's 59% on the mediums. So we're doing well here. Multiple cars have crashed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Behrman got involved in a crash. With who? Oh, no. 
your own teammate. Don't you dare. Oh, come on, guys. Guys, what are we doing? What are we doing, boys? What are we doing, boys? What are we doing? No, ignore. We can't change the front wing. We have to keep going. We have to keep going. What are you doing, though? No, that can't run. That can't run. What are you lot doing? No penalties given because it's inter-team, but uh, the damage is done, to be honest. Oh, no, they're fighting again. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, God. Has Behrman got him? It was this Geo defending. Oh, God. Oh, God. Why do I feel like there's civil war happening in front of my eyes? What am I seeing? Please stop this now. Stop it, boys. Stop it. Yellows. Oh, Lawson's locked up. It's getting overcast. Oh, the rain's here. The rain's here. The rain is here. And the frame rate's here as well. Or lack of frame rate. We're doing well, though, on these tyres. We're protecting them very well. Oh, crash. Oh, could that be something for us? Could that maybe spark a safety car or something? The Williams and Sauber come together in a very similar fashion to the way our drivers did. No, uh, no, uh, no, no, um... No incident, though. No, no safety car or anything like that. All right, we carry on. We carry on. We're not coming in yet. We're not coming in. Verstappen's overtaking Behrman because of that front wing damage. I think we call in Behrman now, to be honest. Maybe go a bit early, maybe. Is there room to go on inters? Is there room? Like, there's like, what? Five laps that you could do inters on? Oh, is he going to make up that time, though? That's the thing. It's not too damp. It's not getting too... It's not damp now, but it will be getting damper. I think I risk it. I think I'll just risk it. You know what? Let's risk it a bit. Let's go into his high aggression. Oh, I didn't change his front wing, did I? I didn't even change his front wing. <laughs> I'm going to have to change it at the uh, at the full wet. What are others coming on to? People are coming on to Inters. I think we're going to pit to full wet with Geo. Behrman's up to P12. Behrman's flying. Behrman's flying. Behrman is absolutely flying. They're putting wets on. See, yeah, they're putting wets on. We're going to come in for wets. We're coming in for wets. That's cool. So he'll be in for wets. Okay. Piastri stayed out. Wow. Piastri stayed out. Piastri stayed out. Unbelievable. These guys are in for wets. Geo as well. And then I'm going to come in this lap, I think. Pit in this lap. Full wets. I need to change the front wing. We have one front wing left. Come in for full wets. Because the track, yeah, the wet will go up all the way. Right, Behrman's in. Right, Geo's up to P10. Because other people are making pit stops off those inters that they were on. Verstappen's the last guy. So we'll be up to P9. And Ocon's there. So we are within the realm of Ocon. We are in the realm of Ocon. Oh, Russell's pitting. Oh, Russell pit out of nowhere. Why did he pit? I think he must have had, uh, had an issue. So we're up to P8 now with Geo. And tire wear wise, we're good compared to Ocon. So we're closing on Ocon. We're closing on Ocon. And we're gaining on Ocon slowly. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Maybe we can push this a bit more. We've saved a lot of fuel as well, to be fair now. So we can push on fuel. Airman's going to get a move done soon. All right, track's going to damp, but this is where we protect the tyres. We need to protect the tyres. We keep going through all of this. Full wets all the way through. I'm going conserve and avoid high-risk curbs. I'm doing everything I can to keep these temperatures down, but they're going very hot because we are technically an inters period, but it's going to get warmer again. And we're actually gaining on Ocon. Three, three seconds the gap, so we're gaining on him. 2.9. Okay, the gap's cl climbing again, but it's fine. It's fine. Just protect the temps. Protect the temps. 2.9. Hulkenberg pits. He bails out. Another set of wets. We're not pitting again. We're not pitting again. Behrman's up to P15. He's recovering slowly. He's recovering slowly. 2.7. 2.7. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Keep in pace with Ocon whilst conserving these tyres. And Behrman gets Ricardo. Good stuff. Good stuff, Behrman. Even with the extra pit stop, we are recovering really well. The fact we're actually up to P12, I think that is... He's actually really amazing. This, you know, considering he's made an extra pit stop, that's really great. Oh, yellows. Who's that for? Yellow Please, flag. not one of our drivers. No, we're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Magnussen. Oh, Magnussen's crash turn nine. Magnussen crash turn nine. Will that be anything? Will there be a safety car? Ooh, probably not. If he goes left, then probably not. I think that'll be that'll be fine to recover. Ocon's now surprisingly got better. Ocon's pulling away from us when we're on normal. But when we're on conserve and avoid high-risk curbs, we're gaining on him. Rain stopped. Okay, okay. Interesting, 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 interesting. Track's now just damp. Do we pit for inters with Behrman? That was what we were going to do all along. I think we do that with Behrman. What have we got to lose? What have we got to lose? What are the gaps? We're a lap down. We're a lap down. Or do we just... Not, oh, you know what? No. 
Let's cancel this. I'm going. I'm going to go long with both drivers. I'm going to go long with both drivers. May as well try and jump people, not making a pit stop. So Geo's P6. Yellow flags. Oh, VSE. Oh, VSE's just come out. Oh, we just crossed the line here. Lawson crashing at turn five. VSE. We could make a pit stop for drives, maybe. If it's going to drive that rapidly, I don't know. Lawson. Oh, big hit for Lawson. Lawson's retired. What are we people on? People on Inters. We're the only ones on wets along with Piastri. Do we make a play for dries? Probably not. Oh, pit window open. Pit window open for the dries. This is when we said we we're going to go dries, but it's still too damp. There's still too much water on circuit. Let's see what Piastri does. He stays out. We stay out. We stay out. Need to watch out for Antonelli behind us on Inters. Is he going to catch us rapidly? If he does, then we've got to come in, maybe. Six seconds. Five. Six point five. Six. Ooh, I can't tell, really. No, he's catching us. He's catching us very quickly. Yeah, we can go one more lap and pit. We'll risk it. We'll risk it. Let's go. Let's go. Risk it. Screw it. Screw it. We're P6 and 11. These are the kind of races that make and break some results like this. You've got to take some risks. You got to take some risks because Antonelli, Antonelli's already overtaken him. Antonelli's already overtaken Gio, and Ocon's on the way. Very easy, Behrman. Very easy. Avoid high risk curbs. Driving clean air. Very light. Very, very light on those softs, please. Very, very light on those softs. What's the last lap for Behrman? One fifty-three. One fifty. Oh, it's dry now. It's dry now. Attack, 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 attack. It's dry now. It's dry. 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 It's go time, boys. It's go time. It's go time. All guns blaze. All right, Gio's up to P8. Oh, Gio's got ahead of Ocon. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's worked. It's worked. Us risking it earlier on the dries has worked. We've got ahead of Ocon. We've stayed ahead of him, rather, in all of that. Your management is and now good. we're gaining on Verstappen, who's a bit slow on the hard tyres. We'll surely get him. Go on. Good move. Good move. Yes! Yes, Gio gets the move done on the staffing. Behrman's got a long way to go to anyone, but it's a good recovery for up from, what was it, P19 to P11. I don't think he'll get any points today unless he catches Russell, who's got maybe an issue, but it's a good recovery for... Obviously, he broke his front wing, then I made the mistake not changing the front wing straight away onto the interstint. Gio's done very well to get ahead of Ocon and now get ahead of Verstappen. Just got to see this through in terms of tyre wear. Hopefully that is possible, I hope. Gio's now been re-overtaken by Verstappen. Ocon is right up his chuff. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. This is it. Seven laps. Can Gio stay ahead of Ocon? Oh, he might get him here. He's got him. He's got him. Oh, no. We'll come back at him, please. Come back at him. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's waltzed away. Oh, my God. He's waltzed away. Oh, dearie me. It's over. It's game over. That RB is so much quicker on those mediums. Sam. He's flying on those mediums. Jeez. Boy, what have RB been putting Ocon's porridge, mate? What the hell? All right, let's go push. Let's push. Let's push. Let's push. No point avoiding high risk curbs anymore. We've only got three laps to go. Three laps to go. Let's see what kind of pace you got. Meanwhile, final lap of the Grand Prix, by the way. Two teammates tussling. Look at this. <laughs> Last lap, Piastri defending Lando at the Hungarian Grand Prix. This is for a That's very important championship good. position here. I don't think Gio will be getting Ocon today. Unfortunately, even with the, the gambles, we were ahead of Ocon on track, but we didn't, we didn't have another medium tyre. We didn't have another medium tyre because we used the medium at the start of the race. Maybe in hindsight, we should have started on the hards, saved a medium for later. I don't know. But we were unable to get Ocon. He will outscore us. Only by two points, but it's still two points that RB will outscore us. Behrman, good recovery after the tussle with his own teammate. It is what it is. And Piastri on the last lap, pulling out all the stops to pull away and get the race win here at the Hungaro ring. Oscar Piastri making a very strong case for the championship today in today's episode for sure. Gasly flying high P5 for Aston. Very big result for them. It's a horrendous result for Red Bull again. Both Mercs good in the points. Russell P10. We finish behind Ocon, but uh, I think I think we definitely need an upgrade. Next episode, we need an upgrade on this car, like for this year. But with that result, Piastri. That's a great way to end it at the summer break. Three points. Three points between our two McLarens. That's 
incredibly close for the second part of the season. That's mad. RB close up again by two points. The pressure is really building. Six points between ourselves and RB. It's going to be a real tough order. We're going to need some upgrades coming in for this year's car to keep this up. But we're going to end the episode then with a helipad constructed for our team. It was a big, meaty episode. Be sure to smash the like button, guys, if you enjoyed the, the extra long episode with the four races done, two managed, two simulated. And let me know what you thought in the comments below. When you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.